When I research these secret societies, and I research the Bible, and by the way, I'm a Christian, so if you're a Christian, don't think I'm knocking your religion. I'm not. I'm just telling you what I've found. I have found that at the very heart and core of all these secret societies lurks the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the ancient Jewish mysticism. It is a method of encoding information through a system of mathematics and numbers. It is some of the most ancient knowledge that man has ever possessed and has been kept secret and given only to those who have proven themselves worthy through the process of initiation. Nobody knows where it comes from. I can tell you this. It was there long before the Jews came along. The Jews just took it and preserved it, and they passed it down, and it's used by everybody. Because it's at the heart and core of the secret knowledge, the metaphysics, the real science that none of us know anything about. These people that belong to the secret societies never dared to write down in any language what they knew, what it was that they were guarding, because then someone could steal it and then the secret would be out. So they devised secret systems of encoding the secrets of the ages, the knowledge, the hidden knowledge, the occult. Now occult doesn't mean evil. It doesn't mean the devil. It doesn't mean Satan. Occult means hidden. It means hidden. That's all it means. So they took this knowledge and they made it occult through a system of encoding encryption, one of which is mathematics, numbers. Another is architecture. Everybody wonder why do they have a fraternal organization called the Freemasons? Aren't those the guys that build walls? You bet they do. But every wall they build contains the secrets that have been kept and maintained throughout the ages and it's encoded in the architecture and in the measurements of the buildings and in the mathematical form formulas used to derive the geometry and the shape the length and breadth and height of rooms it's all encoded there is a collection of Jewish magical texts which were given to mankind via psychic communion with a fallen angel called Raziel. Raziel is one of a pantheon of so-called fallen angels who serve the light bringer Lucifer. The Kabbalah describes the many angels and demons who inhabit the spiritual realm. The Kabbalah gives Kabbalists a road map called the Tree of Life, which explains how to invoke and communicate with these powerful spirits. The magical information in the Kabbalah originates from Babylon and ancient Egypt at the time of the Pharaohs, but did not reach Europe in printed form until the 11th and 12th centuries. The sacred books of the Kabbalah are just a few thousand words long, but they contain complex descriptions of a spherical earth, parallel universes, and the atomic nature of matter, ideas which have become common doctrine amongst modern physicists and astronomers. How could such complex information be contained in a group of ancient texts barely larger than an average magazine? The answer is that the Kabbalah is written in code. 
Codes are used to conceal multi-layered complex information which would later be studied by medieval alchemists. Sir Isaac Newton and many leading scientists studied the rich occult sciences within the Kabbalah. There was a time when mysticism, religion, alchemy, astronomy and astrology were studied as one Kabbalistically based tradition. Jewish physicist Albert Einstein conveyed pages and pages of complex calculations in a simple five symbol code. E equals MC squared. Modern day quantum physics, chaos theory and the notion of parallel universes can all be traced back to the original texts of the ancient Kabbalah. The higher secrets of the Kabbalah included instructions on how to kill a person with just one look. This is called the evil eye. The magical name for the evil eye is En Ha Ra. In a wax cylinder recording made in 1921, we can hear British black magician and part-time espionage agent Alistair Crowley invoking the fallen demon angel Raziel and En Ra Ha, the evil eye. Since medieval times, the Jewish people have been considered a race of magicians. The biblical rabbis used shaman-type techniques to induce altered states of consciousness. Fasting, flagellation, and burying oneself up to the neck were all techniques used to prepare the rabbi magician for a battle through the seven portals of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, where they would eventually meet the supreme deity in a realm called the Merkaba. Ritual sex magic was also practiced amongst some Jewish cults. Many temples had holes in the walls so that rabbis could ritually sodomize a prostitute, a young man or a boy, and invoke the fallen angel Raziel as they reached sexual climax. The word sodomy is derived from the name of the biblical city of Sodom in which sex magic and also blood sacrifice were widely practiced. A strange version of vampirism or blood drinking is still practiced to this day by many rabbis who suck the blood from the freshly severed foreskin of newborn babies. Much of the ritual we see in the modern day Catholic Church such as the symbolic eating the flesh of Christ and the symbolic drinking of his blood are derived from ancient Jewish rituals in which different forms of vampirism and blood sacrifice were an accepted part of this occult tradition. After all, the Pope does wear a Jewish yarmulke. The collection of texts called the Kabbalah were eventually transcribed by Rabbi Isaac the Blind in Provence in the south of France during the 12th century. For the first time in its 6,000 year history, the ancient magical techniques of invoking fallen demonic angels and killing someone using the evil eye were put down on paper. The Kabbalistic writings of Isaac the Blind fell into the hands of a group of nine French noblemen. These noblemen became known as the Knights Templar.
The word cabal, meaning a group who conspire together, comes from the word kabbalah. One such cabal who were to later inspire a whole armada of black magic cults and Freemasonry were the so-called Knights Templar. They laughingly called themselves the Poor Knights of Christ, but these men were far from poor. They deliberately styled themselves as monks so that they could go about their Luciferian Kabbalistic studies and conduct business without being taxed nor arouse suspicion from the Vatican. The Kabbalistic higher secrets of ritual sodomy, the evil eye, chanting incantations, necromancy, blood sacrifice, and invoking the fallen angels in service to Lucifer fascinated the French Knights Templar. They realized that the Kabbalah originated in Palestine, and once they had realized that the Kabbalah was the key to untold spiritual magical power, they cunningly planned a bloody crusade to Palestine in order to search for more Kabbalistic and magical artifacts. They eventually discovered and looted the Temple of Solomon. Solomon was a biblical magician king who is accredited with inspiring large parts of the corpus of works we now know as the Kabbalah. The Knights Templar arrived in Palestine with one main goal, to stop the Muslims from gaining any knowledge about the Kabbalah. Historical Islamic oral accounts from the 12th century testify to a sickening crusade of plunder, torture, murder and sexual depravity. The Knights Templar, once they had discovered the magical teachings of the Kabbalah, were dedicated utterly to destroying its origins so that they might hold its secrets exclusively. Archaeologists have found ample evidence of tunnels constructed by the Templars in Jerusalem. They are widely believed to have found and brought back to Europe the fabled Holy Grail. The so-called Holy Grail is actually a set of higher magical teachings. It is not an object, but a piece of information. Utterly Kabbalistic in its origin, the Holy Grail is the highest Kabbalistic secret. That is, that physical matter can be transformed molecule by molecule by the use of incantations of ancient Hebrew letters and numbers, and that the nature of reality is really an illusion. Oh,